Bubbling resentment over China's strict zero COVID policies erupted after an apartment fire killed 10 people, which included a five year old child in Urumqi, Xinjiang, on the night of November 24th. The following day, videos of fire trucks unable to get close enough to put out the flames spread across the internet. These videos, combined with news of the apartment building's front door being bolted shut due to lockdown measures, sparked anger and discontent across the city. That night, many residents took to the streets chanting, We are people! and end the lockdown. Discontentment might have simmered down, but on the 26th, officials blamed the deaths on residents who should have been more familiar with their building's escape routes. After hearing this, many people in Urumqi disregarded the ongoing three plus months of lockdown and attended candlelight vigils in public places to honor the dead. Around midnight, the police showed up and tried to disperse the crowd. The mourners then started yelling at the cops, with some even calling for Xi Jinping to step down. In the following days, young tech-savvy Chinese found ways to access the videos of the fire and circulated them to their loved ones. As people watched the screams coming from the buildings in Rurumqi on their smartphones, they wondered if they would be the next ones to die due to overly harsh COVID restrictions. Moreover, many young Chinese people had recently seen thousands of maskless people gather for World Cup, further fueling the desire to get back to a life without lockdowns. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funday Investigation. As of December 3rd, protests have spread to 22 cities throughout China, including major urban centers such as Wuhan and Chengdu. Even though lockdown measures sparked the protests, they quickly developed into demonstrations on larger systematic issues with the Chinese government, namely freedom of speech which is extremely brave in the face of the world's largest surveillance state. China has more than 400 million cameras that are equipped with facial recognition software that work even when people are wearing masks. The government also has unrestricted access to the country's 1 billion plus smartphones, along with sensors trolling the internet tracking down anything that counters the official party line. Protesters in the recent demonstrations have found a creative way to get around these restrictions by simply holding up a blank pieces of A4 paper. These blank signs were first used during the recent democracy demonstrations in Hong Kong, when the long slogan could land a protester in jail. Now, young Chinese demonstrators are using blank paper again to voice their discontent with the central government. Tim Bell, a Chinese human rights activist exiled to the US, said, People can read behind the blank paper, the anger, the dissatisfaction, and the desire for democracy and freedom. Everything is already there. Some experts are pointing out that the protests, which have been dubbed the white paper revolution, also show that young people can still think critically about their own government despite Xi's nationalist propaganda found throughout the education system. Even though certain young people are speaking out, Xi's government still trusts that the public harbors deep-seated nationalist sentiments. As such, the central government has been blaming hostile forces for stoking discontent and will crack down on infiltration and sabotage activities. Experts say the central government is trying to dissolve support for the movement by blaming trolls from the US and Taiwan for stoking discontent. So far, the state has allowed protests to continue but have worked behind the scenes to target leaders based on their internet activity. The world is now wondering if Xi's government will start to ramp up suppression and turn the white paper revolution into the next Tiananmen Square. Even though the recent protests are the largest visible demonstration of this content since 1989, most are saying the comparison is still an exaggeration. Tiananmen Square had over a million participants in over 400 cities, while the recent wave of protests have been much smaller. Moreover, she remains popular because most Chinese, especially the elderly who exclusively consume state-run media, agree that his national zero-COVID policies have kept deaths very low 
compared to the West. Therefore, she has been able to shift the blame onto local officials. According to the central government, zero COVID isn't a problem, but regional authorities taking a one-size-fits-all approach. In the past, local officials were punished for letting COVID spread under their watch. So instead of adopting more nuanced approaches, local authorities have favored the one thing proven to keep COVID from spreading, citywide lockdowns for months at a time. However, cases have been rising recently because newer, more transmissible variants are harder to stop. Even though 90% of the overall population is vaccinated, China's domestic vaccine is far less effective at preventing death in the elderly compared with Western counterparts. Under such circumstances, if China were to suddenly lift its zero COVID policies, experts predict that around 1.2 to 2 million people would die. The white paper revolution has made the central government realize that young people are at a breaking point. So local authorities have started to relax individual restrictions. For instance, in Urumqi, the government will open up malls, markets, and restaurants. Also, in a surprising turn, the central government has started to redirect the country's COVID narrative. Recently, an unnamed expert said that the government may downgrade COVID to a category B infectious virus because Omicron is less deadly than previous variants. However, it will take time for the public to shift their attitudes towards the virus, especially after hearing the merits of zero COVID ad nauseum on state media over the past three years. A million plus deaths would undermine the narrative that Omicron isn't that deadly and thus she's overall popularity. Therefore, the central government will probably continue to do two things. First, keep making minor concessions to alleviate dissent among young people. And second, placate the elderly by blaming dissent on foreign agents from the US and Taiwan. Do you think the white paper revolution will turn into the next Tiananmen Square? What do you think the Chinese would say if the government wasn't monitoring their speech? Let's start a conversation in the comments below and I will see you next time.